one set then. I'm just going to call one set. Hello? Grimes! How are you? Long time no speak. What's been going on? How's Elon? All right, what do you want to talk about? No way. The BPMs are off. Well, listen, here's what happens. Sometimes in record box, when you analyze the BPMs of a track, it doubles it so that then when you press sync, it'll go all out of time. Yeah, you've got to like learn to like DJ first. Hello? Oh. <laughs> Music, industry talk, stories, equipment, and more. We are Crossfader, and this is Off, 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 off the Record. Off the record. When are the uh, Oscars? <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome back to this week's Off the Record podcast. If you're still listening, um, yeah, it's myself, Lawrence James, and Danny James. How are you, pal? I'm good, mate. How are you? It's just still just us two, isn't it? Yeah. No one else is here, honestly. Oh, David Attenborough's in the corner. Um, <laughs> Yeah, how are you, mate? You having a good week? Oh uh, yeah, I'm having a good week. Good week, yeah. Week's good. gone fast. A lot's happened. Life's good. Yeah, life's good. Yeah, it's tough out there for a few people, isn't it? <sighs> yeah, bless her. <laughs> <laughs> um, this week we're going to talk about some opportunities in the DJ world um, and how you can make money from them. We had a great question in around promoting events from one of our Discord members. There's stuff to tell you about with Mixcloud, which we talked about last week, and there's also um, a competition which is live. Now, where you can win a DDJ Flex 10. So we're recording this on Thursday the 18th? 18th. 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 Thursday the 18th. If you are listening by Monday the 22nd or 21st, um, then you can still enter the competition to win a Flex 10. This is part of our partnership with Mixcloud, where we are giving away a DDJ Flex 10, a open format DJ course, which is our latest course, and a Mixcloud Pro account uh, for an annual subscription, which unlocks like all the best features of Mixcloud, licensed live streaming, unlimited uploads, um, custom themes, and all that kind of stuff. But all the information uh, is on our website and on our socials. Go check the socials out. But uh, last chance to enter by Monday the 22nd, I believe, or 21st, whatever the Monday is. Um, should we just talk about it? <laughs> Let's talk about it. She's had a rough week as our Grimes. She has. Um, and it's funny one. This is off the record, isn't it? Because it's been the biggest talk of the week. Yeah. And it's exploded. And in in today's sort of culture, you never want to sort of bash anybody out of nowhere, right? No. Which is what's happened, right? Everyone's bashed her. And, you know, rightly or wrongly, everyone's sort of bashed her. Because, you know, one, it's her fault. It's headline Coachella. You should do it. But then, like, let's not go overboard and, like... yeah. It's not the end of the world, is it? Yeah, we've all done it, guys. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, yeah. What are your thoughts? Well, do you know what? I, to be fair, I actually rate that she's owned up to it. Do you know what I mean? Like she, I mean, she, she owned up to a jury. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, she could have definitely addressed it better. Like you'd think of someone who's a performer like Grimes, like she would have coped a bit better. Like she was screaming in the mic and just be like, ah. But it's like, come on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, something's going wrong, but. You could have dealt with it a bit better, but when she like said after that it was her fault and you know kind of took the rap for it, then fair play because some people could have just I don't know had a bit of a cop out. I guess she did in a way. Like she didn't she say that she like outsourced her BPMs or something like yeah. Crazy. A bit of backstory because I get that everyone isn't over everything. So um, Grimes, who is a very famous artist, she was married to Elon Musk. I think she was. Yeah, they married, got a kid. Or yeah, got a kid together, aren't they? Or, yeah. or twelve. And um, yeah, she's an artist, but obviously started to DJ now. She did a big set at Coachella to like, I don't know, 100,000 people or something, something daft. Mm -hmm. um, and it all went wrong, basically. I'm sure you've seen the clips if you haven't. She basically, um, the, the music's all going crazy at double time. And then she just basically grabs a mic, screams, ah, yeah. <laughs> tells everybody what's going wrong, can't fix it. And then I, I don't know what happened after. I think she carried on with it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think she had to like not mix. Yeah. Uh, because she doesn't basically doesn't know how to, right? Yeah. So that's been the like internet talk this week, and I think that yeah, what yeah, basically what's happened is you know most ninety nine percent of DJs listen to this will understand. Record box will analyze files, so that'll do it as well. And drum and bass especially will either be like eighty eight or a, you know or double time. Yeah. And that's what's happened. But sometimes when you press sync, it doesn't realize to do it at half time. Yeah, yeah. So she's pressed sync. And she's doing drum and bass and it's going all out of whack, basically. But she doesn't know how to fix it. Right. Which is obviously an issue. And 
if you are head, her, her excuse was that she outsourced the record box uh, part of her set. So someone <laughs> yeah. basically analysed her library and stuff yeah. for her. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so again, it goes back to what we teach a lot, right? Which is like mixing by ear. Like you, you can't just turn up and press sync. <clears throat> this is one of the dangers of, of sync DJs or, or not learning to DJ without sync. Mm-hmm. Something that we teach uh, as part of the fundamentals of DJing, and if she had that as a backup, like no, one, you know, you would never be hearing about this. Yeah, um, and you, I, come on, it's one of those that people would be mad if she was one of these DJs that just came and did a pre-recorded set. At right. least she's actually doing something. Yeah, you gotta give her that. No, oh, yeah, you know, it's like people go on and be like, oh, they just play a pre-recorded set. It's like, well, you can kind of see that she's not. At least she tried. Yeah. You know? So we were like, how do we how do we cover it? Do we cover it again? It's that fine line of being like joking but then you know being a bit sort of bullyish and so we thought yeah. we'll just talk about it on the podcast and yeah. not, not post anything about I it. I will say the memes have been hilarious. These have been great. There was a that, <laughs> that one you put in the group there who wants to be a millionaire. <laughs> yeah it's just like four answers. Uh, yeah um, you, you it, feel for them after a while but it's. But I think the the most anticipated DJ set in my lifetime is like next week when she's back on. <laughs> yeah I know yeah. Because Coachella is two, yeah. is it two months or two weeks or. It's two weeks. It's two weeks yeah, so she's like back weekends. on in like, like this week weekend or whenever I wonder is. if she's going to get like a oh. massive pull because people have seen what's happened on the first week so people want to see what happens huge or no one goes like it's going to be one or the other she has to play it well right she needs to get yeah. some like visuals of like all these troll things yeah, or yeah. something she needs to like lean into it I think yeah I think <laughs> if she leans into it and just embraces it and then like you say puts the memes up or something like yeah I'll just like starts a set like double time and be like ah <laughs> like, joking <laughs> yeah <laughs> took I a, fixed it <laughs> took, took a cross of course in the week <laughs> <laughs> sank um but we'll leave Grimes. But I was thinking about some of DJ fails. Uh, I know you and Jamie had a bit of a story about like DJ stories a few weeks ago on the podcast. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, I was thinking about some DJ fails. And yeah, there's been times where, you know, I think we can all, if you, by the way, we are live on uh, Facebook and YouTube, right? Uh, yes. Um, yep. If you are listening, hello. Welcome everyone around the world. If you have got any stories about DJ fails, if you want some uh, input on the Grimes situation, let us have it. If you just want your question answered, um, let us know um but i think yeah some dj fills that kind of came to mind there's always like you know you, there's the one where you're always you're pressing the cue on the wrong cue button like especially with yeah. serato um starting the wrong pressing stop on the wrong on the track that's playing everybody's done that yeah um even the double time thing right i've done that where it's i you just gone to quick mix press sync and it's double time yeah, you know how to wrong. get out of it yeah yeah uh, um i was thinking some uh some other like dj fails i've done one where we did a big relaunch of a club the club has spent like 100 grand on new sound uh function one sound system yeah and it was a day where I'd, I'd, i was i was playing at warehouse and i'd been at cross crossfader all day from like eight at nine in the morning and this this gig was like at night and it was like till four in the morning right yeah and about 1 a.m the sound just went off right because it was a new installation we didn't have much time to test it yeah yeah uh the sound went off and essentially one of the main amps blew up and there was nothing they could do about it oh, no. so it was like oh my god and it was it was like a big launch so, and uh but i remember thinking to myself at that time like it was 1 a.m i'd been up since like 7 a.m yeah. <laughs> i was like you know what <laughs> it could be an early night this is, this is an early night for me <laughs> let's go <laughs> uh have you got any dj fails oh, i've had loads of yeah, years yeah. i mean yeah i've had like serato crash on me before i've had record bots crash on me before like yeah things go wrong with cdjs i've had cdjs crash like mm. usually i used to think that when i was on serato all the time i'd always have a usb loaded in a in a cdj just in case and then think oh that's my like my savior you know i can always yeah, jump yeah. to a usb but then i've had times where like the usb's crashed and like corrupted the cdj and yeah yeah it's never 100 percent safe i've had I, I like fails with like artists you know like not turning up or turning yeah. up late or stuff like that we had we had one where <clears throat> back in uh, UK people know like an artist called Tiny Temper who had like two number ones back to back out of the gate. He was a big um, uh, artist at the time. So I was doing a show for him uh, in this big, big club. It was like 3,000 cap, sold out. Promoter comes up, it's supposed to be on at midnight. Promoter comes up to me at like 11.30. He's like, yeah. tell the crowd it's be half an hour. I'm like, sweet. On the mic, I'm like, Tiny's half an hour away. Everyone's like, eh. Gets to like, five to 12 promoter comes he's like oh it's gonna be about 20 minutes or something i was like he's like tell the crowd i'm like yeah cool tiny's ready to, you know 20 minutes right so this goes on and on right and it gets to like half one oh. and i'm like i i'm i'm feeling the energy of the crowd now because we've been saying he's here for like an hour and a half yeah and i'm like 
something's happening here. So the promoter comes up again. He's like, oh, it's 10 minutes. I said, what's happening? Yes. Like, <laughs> this ain't right. What's happening? Yeah. He goes, there has been literally a shutdown on the motorway and he's not moved for like an hour. Oh. I'm like, oh God. So it gets to like, the club closes at three. Oh. It gets to like, I think two. Oof. And everyone's like, there's only one person you can look at. He's like the DJ. You're not going to walk around looking like a manager, right? Oh, yeah. like, everyone's drunk. <laughs> everyone's like, the energy's gone, right? So no, yeah. one's da- no one's like really dancing. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. Um, so anyway, he didn't turn up. Um, the, the promoter's like, oh yeah, tell everyone he's not coming. Um, so, sorry. I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. No way am I saying that. Yeah. Anyway, it, it was got really hostile towards the end. But then, you know, most people kind of realized that everyone's drunk at 2 a.m. Yeah. The f- they rebooked it. Um, same promoter, different club, but it was still a, a big club. About two months later, everyone who like bought a ticket had, to, had the ticket for it. The promoter comes up to me at the gig. He's like, oh yeah, Tiny's half an hour away. I'm like, nope. <laughs> I'm <laughs> not, not even, I was saying it. nothing. No. no way. No. Um, but yeah, that was interesting. But yeah, any DJ fails you've got, if you're watching live, let us know. Um, we had a great um, question, which we're going to get stuck into. Um, from somebody in our Discord. If you want to join our Discord, you search cross, Crossfader Discord. Thousands of DJs in there just like, having a chat, helping each other out. We found Dead Mouse in our Discord the other day. We did. The Dead Mouse. I, I, I'm kind of like nervous that he listens to this because he's everywhere. He is. <laughs> he's the guy on the internet, isn't he? He's, so, yeah. yeah. So the Dead Mouse was in our, our, Discord, our Discord, Discord asking about a very technical record box question. Yeah, very technical. <laughs> so yeah, all kinds of weird and wonderful, wonderful things happening in our Discord. Um, but it was a great question, which was, I'd love to see a, a topic about this on your podcast, uh, about hosting events, becoming a promoter. Some questions I'd like to be answered are, um, how should someone go about promoting their first event outside of their friendship group? Should people be looking for a collab with influencers, running paid ads, sticking posters up, etc.? Uh, when it comes to genres, how do I choose? Should you go with what's popular in your town or city um, or go against the grain? How should you decide on your venue? bar spends, hiring a venue, looking for a venue, etc., etc. which is a great question. And it's obviously it's some DJs looking for other ways to make money. Promoting an event is great. Very hard work. And obviously, Danny, you've been a DJ working for promoters. Yeah. I've done this. So I was, as a DJ, I come up promoting as well. So I was literally doing 50-50 for, I don't know, about eight, nine years. Mm. So like I've been in this world and um, obviously it's a lot changed since I was doing it, but the fundamentals remain the same. And it's like, the, f- the first question is, you know, how do you go about promoting your first event outside of your friendship group? Now, nobody, you can't promote a, f- a event outside of your own circle. Yeah. It doesn't really work like that. Mm. The re- events start, unless, because you're not a company coming in with a budget where you can run ads and stuff like that. You need to start off with people in your demographic and people who like what you do. Mm-hmm. Um there's little, there's, there's one-off gigs and stuff coming up and they're really super niche, a niche D&B event, a niche jump-up event, a niche techno event. And it's like-minded people who you like in your network, yep. telling their friends, telling their friends. That's how it starts if you don't have like the capital to come in and, you know, run a bunch of ads on and, and, book, a, and book a headline act, right? You can come out of nowhere and spend, you know, 20 grand getting Fred again to come to you yeah, <laughs> yeah. and sell tickets if you've got 20 grand, which you probably don't. Yeah. Um, and more probably. Um, so it does start small mm-hmm. uh, and you need to look at your friendship groups and you need to start off on smaller venues. And trust me, when you get into promoting, smaller venues are a win. Like much more easy to manage, uh, easier to build connections with, easier to fill. When it's not as busy, still looks busy. Yeah. Oh, everyone says like a 400 cap club where we are is like perfect. Oh yeah. Because on your quieter nights, it still looks rammed. Yeah. Whereas your, your 3000 capacity club, even if you've got a thousand people in there, looks It'll dead. still look quiet. Yeah. Dead. And they're all dying off. Yeah. Um, so it's a great question. Um, yeah. Should you start with like influencers, run ads, sticking posters up, sticking posters up? Yeah. I remember doing that at like three, four in the morning. Yeah. I remember exit flyering when people come out of a club. I'd send, I'd send staff round to flyer everyone. Yeah. I don't know if that's still a dying thing because of social media and stuff, but um, running ads, I don't know. It depends on like your budget. You can't be just running a targeting ad. It's really hard to be like, to get like a reach running ads. Mm. Might be worth a try, but again, depends on your budget. Um, when it comes, second question was, when it comes to genre, how do you choose? Uh, should you go with what's popular in the town or city? Um, again, I think you need to start off super niche. Yeah. Super niche. I don't think you can go for like a, a, a catch all if you're brand new into it. Yeah. Unless okay, unless you have like a headliner yeah. that like starts it. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You need somebody to be like, oh, there's a hip hop event on in my town. Or I'd be like, why would I go to this one or, uh, when there's like an established one down the road? Yeah. You'd be like, oh, you know, skeptics here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be like, all right, yeah. okay, I'll, I'll come now. Yeah. You know, like. Um, you see a lot of, like the theme nights as well, don't you? So yeah. like you could have like a hip hop night that was playing generic hip hop every week, but then you could do a Drake like night. a Wu Tang special yeah, or Wu -Tang something. Wu Tang night. Yeah. Like, yeah. See what gets people in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think outside of the box or like, you know, yeah. live percussion. Like there's a lot of these like, orchestral performances yeah. of, yeah. you know, Kanye West album or something like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd say like generic, uh, sorry, niche down big time. Use your network yeah. uh, for sure. Um, what about, so yeah, how would, how should you decide on your venue? Minimum spends, hiring a venue. So this, the logistics of it, um, in general, you'd pick a, a smaller venue, Test the water, try and get it going, try and get a relationship. They're going to give you a night that isn't busy or is closed, obviously. Yeah. They're not going to give you a Saturday night. Mm -hmm. um, so therefore, you have some wiggle room in what you can sort of take because if they're not open, they're, they'll be willing to sort of let you in at a relatively low cost because right. as long as they can make some money. So you might start off with, you know, you take all the ticket money and let's you know do 20% bar split. Yep. You might just have to start off and just take the ticket money, you pay the DJs, you pay your staff uh, and then we'll open, we'll take the bar and pay our staff. Um, but it's all negotiation. But I think to s sort of sum it up is I definitely start off small, start off niche, use your network as much as you can um, and then just d do something that you like love. Yeah. Like, you know, if you're banging to techno and stuff, don't start a student event, you know, that's like a theme of like, Cops and robbers. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. do something that you would, like you want to go to. Yeah. 100%. Um, and that brought me onto some like other ways of making money. I went on Instagram today um, and, and asked our community about different ways that they have made money or as a DJ, because, you know, we had Blakey on last week, who is our open format DJ tutor. He's going to be featured on a lot of our socials and he's currently working on our scratch um, course. Yep. Uh, and he's a former world champion uh, turntablist. Uh, and I, his journey's crazy. He's been he's DJed, uh, for games and made the DJ Hero game for like PlayStation. Um, he's toured with like Spider Man. He's he's got his scratches in Spider Man. So his career has, has let him make money out of DJing that yeah. isn't gigs. Yeah. So I just sort of run off um, some ideas um, that DJs are making money that aren't through generic gigs. Yeah. Because you start DJing, you know, you want to be you want to be in Coachella, right? That's that's a dream. Yeah. But as you go through it, you want to pick up money on the way, and there's some great ways to do that. Uh, promoting events. Go, yeah. hand, go hand in hand, don't they? Yeah, yeah, it's one. We go hand in hand. Yeah. Um, this is one that I've done as well. So making mixes for gyms, personal trainers, bars and restaurants. And then someone put, I make mixes for um, basketball matches, then like nice. halftime basketball matches. Yeah. But when I started putting mixes out on SoundCloud and MixCloud, yeah. Uh, gym owners and promoters message me all the time. Did they? Yeah. Nice. And I'd be like, you know, 50 quid for a mix, 100 quid for a mix. Nice. And sometimes I've already done the mix. Yeah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> Just like relabel yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but PTs especially want um, a gyms, um, want, and gyms want DJs as well. Like um, yeah. I was playing with a guy a few weeks ago um, and he was like, oh, yeah. Quite, I'm quite tired. Um, I've just I've just come from, I've just done three hours at a gym, like at a workout class. Wow. Again, just another way, isn't I it? I did mixes for a dance studio once. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that was a bit weird. I got asked to do a mix for just like um, this like dance group that we're doing like, you know, like a break dancing sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, we want the chat to come in here, do this and that. And then other people heard it and they were like, can you do one for our dance studio? I was like, all right. Sick. Yeah. That's just unlocked the maddest memory. I, I got a message out of the blue yeah. from this dance troupe in America. Right. Do you know like these massive dance competitions you see? Like what's the, what's the film, the American film? Step Up. Like, like that, that. exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. like that, right? Yeah. So I was like, "Is this is this real or not?" So I yeah. checked it out; it looked real. So I was like, "There was like, here's my budget, and it was a lot. I think yeah. It was like a thousand pound or something. They Jeez. they wanted because I was doing minute mashups at the time. And that's yeah, how they found yeah. me. So like, can you do this for us? Right. I'm like, okay, send some songs over. So they sent a track list over. I'm like, this is legit. Yeah. Uh, long story short, I went back and forth with them over it. They absolutely loved it. Um, paid me straight up. And then sent me a video of them winning. And it was like in front of like 10,000 people. Like nice. this, like, as you can imagine, like yeah. this college basketball yeah, arena. Yeah, yeah. I need to find that video. Nice. I totally forgot about that. It was about five years ago. There you go. Another another way to make yeah. money. Someone <laughs> said boxing walkout music. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. fighters. Um, custom DJ drops. 
So if you're good on a microphone and you know how to use a bit of editing software, right? Or even yeah. not, like you can record it into Serato, can't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. Put yeah. some effects on it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, making custom DJ drops, you know, you're in a mix with Danny James. Yep. You're in a mix with Grimes, Coachella 2024. <laughs> some uh, guys just said here, there are DJs that are doing better on the internet than they are working in clubs. I'd agree with this. 100%. Yeah. There's like, there's Twitch DJs out there that yeah. you can like see the money that they're getting sent. And it's like, that is more than you'd make on an hour stream than you would a week's worth of DJing in a club. It's totally possible. Without a doubt. Yeah. And then, the off, well, off, streaming is obviously one of these points, but off the back of streaming, the things that you can sort of, if you grow an audience, there's, yeah. there's merchandise. Mm -hmm. There's a great one here, which is selling USBs. Yeah. Now, this is maybe more producer-led, but mm -hmm. we know, a lot, actually maybe not, because remember, um, it's a bit different now, but like uh, DJ James used to do edits yeah, for yeah, DJs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can still do that. Obviously, you've got um, DJ pools, but not a lot of people want a subscription. It's yeah. quite expensive. So DJs will give out edits uh, on a USB that you can buy for like, you know, $20 or something. It's got like thousands of their edits. Yeah. And it's a great way for DJs to make money. It's a great way as a DJ to get music um, as well. For sure. Um, this is a, a relatively new one, right? Uh, um, selling their, DJs selling their playlists. Not as not yeah. as music files. They're just selling the the track list order. Yeah, right. That's interesting. So there's DJ CB. We met at the oh in London. London. Yeah, yeah. There's there's another wedding DJ, not Nick Spinelli, the other guy. I can't remember his name. Um, uh, yeah. But if you've got a good social audience, yeah, um, uh, and you're really into sort of organisation, you've got great organisation, mm. then you can uh, basically sell your crates and. And your order of your crates, but not yeah. the music files. Mm -hmm. So if you're, you know, a DJ just coming into it, it might be a great tool for like, like a cheat sheet yeah. of what to put in. Especially if you're an event DJ, wedding DJ, and you've got like 80s, 90s, you thousands of songs that you need organizing. Mm. Um, it might be a great way to make money and also organize your crates. Sure. Um, there is teaching people, just like we've like we've done, like yeah. made a whole business out of teaching people to DJ. Uh, if you um, are a seasoned DJ, you can do one to one. You can do it online, you know, start maybe start a YouTube channel, start educating people. There's so many different DJs online educating in different areas. There's, you know, there's obviously Crossfader um, that, that is kind of like across the whole spectrum of DJ education. Yeah. But then there's, there's people just, just doing like record box tips, um, you know, just um, doing like Serato tips, super niche, just doing pioneer equipment. Um, so if you have experience teach it yeah. and not even just that if if you're you know a great wedding dj there's a huge audience of like wedding djs you know what kit to buy mm. how to set up your gear all that kind of stuff it's all education yeah that you can sort of package up and sell that comes on to the next point is like kit hire yeah yeah big time like i don't personally like own any like big systems or anything like that mm -hmm. so anytime i get like a private event yeah i'm always like who, who can I buy this? Like, can I rent yeah. this off? I've hired out my turntables and stuff before. Yeah, yeah. Who who, who was famous that took one? Andy C. Andy C. <laughs> yeah, I hired my turntables to Andy C. Yeah, 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 yeah. he was playing at the O2 so in Leeds. Yeah, it was pretty. When I got them back, I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, even though I've had these for years, oh, <laughs> I'll never wash them ever again. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, yeah, so if you've got a DJ equipment, you can yeah, but like uh, anyone need a flex ten this weekend and some subs or whatever. Yeah, uh, hire it out. Uh, for sure, uh, this is a great one which you do, which I don't even I need to do. Yeah, reselling your old records. I do, I do this. Yeah, what do you I, sell? What do you sell them? How do you sell them? Discogs, but you you got to know what you're looking for. That's the key to it. I think if you if you know which records to look for, you got to look around, get a good bargain. What also, about selling them? Yeah, I stick them back up on Discogs. So I'll like get them, I'll I'll clean them, I'll make sure that they play all right. Then I'll just be like, cool, I found this, I'll resell it. Like another great way to find them as well. I find if you just go into like charity shops and like old record stores mm. and like they have like a one pound bin, or like right. a one dollar bin and you'll find stuff and you're like, whoa. And then because a lot of these charity shops and stuff, they don't know what it's worth. Yeah. So like they just throw it in like, oh, it's a record. And then you look on Discogs and it's like, whoa, this is worth like 30 quid. It's like great. Unreal. Like win. Yeah. And they give you like a rough price of how much it's going to cost and stuff. But yeah. Yeah. Like I am, I am this person. So I've got, I want to say two, a thousand to, I don't know, maybe two thousand. I don't know, two thousand between a thousand and two thousand something records. Yeah, yeah. In my mum's my mum's um, my mum's cellar yeah. basement is I reckon there's four walls that yeah. are full and like three three tiers. You need to get them. You need to get them. Sorry, I just sat there yeah. and I've been sat there for like ten years and I have like an emotional attachment. But then I'm like, do I really? Because I don't. I've not not seen them in ten years. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I guess it's the hassle of of it all. It's like, a lot of work. Yeah. It's a lot of work. I only do it every now and again. Yeah. I'm not like fully committed. Some people are like in it. Like, I, and, I, and I know job. what'll happen is I'll go down there 
and I'll be like, oh, yes. oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> I'll just pl- I'll just DJ with them and put them back. Just forever, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So a great one. And then last one, uh, brand collaboration. So if you do start to get a bit of a following, mm. um, I've noticed with a few of our friends like DJ Flex and stuff, yeah. you, can re- you can reach out and then brands will reach out to you to do activations. So they'll send you their earbuds or their headphones yeah, yeah. or, you know, a Flex 10 or... Um, a camera or whatever it is to advertise to their audience. Yeah. Get you a fee. You'll get to keep the thing. Yeah. It's nice. <laughs> see a lot of uh, like store DJs as well. Like here in the UK, like London, they have like Nike Town, they have DJs on. Oh yeah, and that's then, a good one. Yeah. yeah, they yeah, have, yeah. Like, I don't know if you get, I heard that they don't get a wage, but they'll get like 150 pounds worth of night clothes every month. It's like, that's perfect. Like that will do. <laughs> Who do I speak yeah. to? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But stuff like that is another great place to, uh, you know, do a little bit of something else. It's not club DJing. 100% speaking yeah. of club DJ go and jump on the decks let's do it uh, we are going to uh, get into a bit of add to playlist we're going to build your playlist up with some new tracks uh, just a reminder guys we are in the midst midst Jesus who am I we are in the midst of a, a competition um, if you've just joined us or you've, or you've uh, just uh, just joined us we are giving away a DDJ Flex 10 in partnership with Mixcloud uh, you can win a DDJ Flex 10 a open format DJ course which is our latest course and a a Mixcloud Pro account for a year. Uh, and the Mixcloud Pro account gives you a lot of amazing features for you to promote your mixes. Get on live stream. That's another one as well. Yeah, making money as a DJ. Tips on Mixcloud. Somebody wrote, somebody wrote, I get tips on Mixcloud every week and every month. Tips on Mixcloud. Create a subscription on Mixcloud. A great way to just like bolster your income as a DJ. There isn't gigs. There isn't, there isn't just the daily grind of gig after gig after gig. So, um, we're going to play Add to Playlist now, which is where we're going to build your playlist up. Danny's going to give us a few tracks. We're going to rate them. We're going to give them an energy rating. We're going to see if we like them, if we're vibing with them, try and put them in a genre. Um, I'll jump over to this one uh, while you play it. Um, and yeah, yeah what have you got for us? I've got some bangers. This is the difficulty about not having three people here without someone to take the camera. <laughs> right, okay. Do you want to stick the headphones on? Make sure you can hear this all good. You hear me fine? I can hear you. Right, let's go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, you know, carnival. I'm at a carnival. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, man. Yeah, this right. is. What a start this is, by the way. This is. I thought I'd get a few different ones this week. Yeah, this is. Right, should we jump to the next one? No, well, no, no. This is a vibe. Just gonna turn you up a little bit. Right. We got, got another drop in here. <laughs> right, turn your music down, totally. Um, that is all, all I'm about. Like, that, that represents my my energy this week. That song, yeah, just like good good mood, good vibes. Nice. What uh, that? Ooh, what is that? That is salsa. Hip hop, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm just putting carnival. Yeah. Is, there, is there a is there a genre with that track? I don't know. The second drop. Ballet. Is the it's like is it Brazilian funk? Like it's kind of that like Brazilian funk vibe, isn't it? It's the vibe. The vibe. Um, energy. Do you want to hear this drop first? Oh right. I'm in. I'm in. Oh, I don't have a gig tonight either. No. Did this last week where yeah, there's yeah. loads of bangers. I'm like, I just want a DJ. I've got two <laughs> yeah. gigs this weekend though, so it's coming out for that. Um, who is that? That is uh, Bam Bam Cupid on. I think to turn your mic up a bit. I think just a little bit. Bam, what is bam, it? Bam 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 Cupid on flip. Cupid on flip. Yeah, um, yeah I'm all over that. That is yeah. sort of going in my like global sound Brazilian funk. Yeah. Ballet. I've got like a ballet folder. Um, and then, and, uh, do you know what the energy? Even though it's low, what is the tempo of that? Uh, one four four. Is it? Yeah, yeah. K- kind of. Yeah. Yeah, one four four. Yeah. Yeah. I'm putting it as a five just because. Yeah. It's like carnival. It may, it's like it's, <laughs> it's the kind of music that just makes you feel good. As soon yeah. As well. It's like yeah. instant happiness. Hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I would add right. this up. That's in oh. uh, that's in the playlist. Then. Right. Next one. Oh, without a doubt. Are we ready? Yeah. Sick. Go, 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 go. Got this. I've got this. Oh. 
again, all three tunes. Yeah, I found this. Um, this is in my playlist already. Um, yeah, it's been wild. High energy. High energy. Highest of energy. I like how I, I do love a drum and bass track that doesn't have a build up. Yeah. You just start. Yeah. Because when I downloaded it, I'm like, I'm going to play the original. Yeah. And then no one's going to know. Yeah. This is going to come in. Yeah. And I'm ready. No messing about. No messing about. Uh, drum and bass. Don't need to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, energy five. Easy. Yeah. That is Kanye West Carnival. Uh, is it high, higher light? Higher light edit? Higher light edit. Yeah. I've yeah. already, I found that. Yeah. Um, these yeah. will all be in the Discord, so everyone jump in there. I, people have started like reacting to the, the actual track list in Discord. People are loving it, so get people, in there. People loving the Discord. Discord. They'll be in straight after this. So, next one, ready? We are. This is like one of my most played songs in my hip hop set, like hip hop dance hall sets. Ooh, hello. That's UK funky, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is like UK sounds for sure. I, I, I can imagine, I can, I can imagine Diplo playing this. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? For sure. Yeah. But yeah, a bit of a vibe. I quite like this. Miss Fatty Fatty. Yeah. So that tune is by Sorensen and it's called Hey Miss. So say that again because your mic was a bit. Sorensen is the artist. Sorensen. Yeah. And the tune is called Hey Miss. A miss. What's the edit though? Is that the Sorensen edit? That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorensen edit yeah, of uh, A miss. I don't know. I can't remember the name of the original artist on that. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's gone. But it'll yeah, be in the Discord. The one. <laughs> uh, where would I put? Uh, yeah, I'm putting that in UK in like a UK funky yeah. sound. Yeah, it's not. It's not house at all. Like what time of night you playing it? Good question. Earlier. Earlier. A bit earlier. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in between like mid and peak energy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'd say the same. Yeah. Right, next one. Yeah. I like this whole... Yeah. This is my vibe this week, this, this whole genre. Same with this. Yeah. Should we go to Brazil? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Oh, 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 that took me. Yeah. I had no idea. That's definitely in the playlist then, yeah. Ooh. Do you know what's, you know what's like, you know what's, you know what's upsetting me? What? There's nowhere I can, there's nowhere I can go this weekend to hear this. To listen to this. Yeah. Yeah, and there's people Australia. listening to this all around the world like Yo, this is just our regular yeah. our regular music I'm jealous and I'm jealous of that yeah um, again right again, I've got this barley folder like bar, bar, I've got this like barley Brazilian funk folder yeah um, that is, that's where this is all these kind of vibes yeah so that was Johnny 500 Johnny um, 500 what? the track's called Ma- is it Magalena? Ma- hey, Magalena Magalena sorry if we've butchered yeah I'm sorry if but this is like just Yorkshire we're but- just butchering <laughs> I don't know yeah <laughs> Don't know what language, but we apologise. We tried. <laughs> we tried. We tried. Right, next one. Let's go. This is the last one, by the way. So go for a biggie. Let's <laughs> pull the UK back in. Yeah. Jesus. Bit of silence. I'm scared. Before the chaos. <laughs> Oh, it's one of that. It's one of that where it sounds like a chair has been <laughs> a chair has been pulled. Warm. Is that Flo Dan? Yeah, Flo Dan. So the track is Juni Flo Dan Dub is called. So you're, you're expecting proper drum and bass, aren't you? Like you, I'm expecting a big, big energy. Yeah, and it's kind of that like. It's kind of that two-step. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, it's kind like of that dark. two swing garagey drums. Yeah, where two-step I mean, like dark garage. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. Where I was expecting like a big drum and bass drop, but it's yeah. just like nice. Um, yeah, I play that all day. What's that? Uh, Juni Flow Dan Dub. It's called Juni Flow Dan Dub. Yeah, um, yeah Energy Five um, Garage Playlist. Yeah, yeah. UK Garage Playlist. Sweet. That's uh, it for this week. Need to come some. Um, 
They pop next week, don't we? We do. We'll switch it up next week, guys. We will. Thanks Absolutely. for having to play this. Right, you've got some uh, questions favourite there. Yeah, I do. Sorry, guys, I need to move over. With Jamie not being here, if you're watching live, we've got too many things to do. Oh, yeah. Not enough hands. <laughs> yeah, we just need extra limbs. So we're back. Right, last uh, yeah, few questions. Jump, jump so. into our Discord uh, if you want the track list of our Add to Playlist game. Some bangers in there. I'm, where can I just... I need... If anyone's got like a great like sort of Brazilian funk, Moon Baton yeah. playlist, yeah. put it in the chat or DM me it. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to like get on that vibe this whole weekend. Yeah, man. Cool, right. So let's jump into a few questions. Some of these are actually questions, they're just... Yeah. A few things to say. Comments, so, let's go. Paul Walker, going to a Ibiza on Sunday solo just for a chill week. <gasps> Decided to contact a few Ooh. bars to see if I could do an, a one-hour set. Well chuffed. Managed to get a couple lined up. Give up. Fairly well-known bars. Do you know, where's where's the round of applause for that? Because I rate that. You know what? Yeah. We were we literally, we talked about this last week. It was, we were talking about setting goals last week, right? Yeah. And I said, I was like, don't get this the wrong way, but if you want to DJ in Ibiza, it's, it's not as difficult as you think because the amount of get venues per capita of people yeah. is ridiculous, right? Because yeah. it's like the party island of the world. So there are thousands of bars. That you, forget your highs and amnesias. There are yeah. thousands of bars, restaurants. Restaurants want DJs. Yeah, yeah. This is amazing. And, and it's amazing what a message can do. Yeah, love you know, that. The, the, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be the, the promoter of that bar, you know, messaging people and be like, can't get a DJ anywhere. And some yeah, DJ yeah. just jumped in his DMs and just saved him. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. There you go. Uh, so we've got a couple of fails as well. Oh, well, let's go. DJ fails. My personal fave was shouting, are you ready? Before the big drop. And then it just totally cut oh, out. Oh, is that, Jules, all... that Jules? Shout out to Jules every time. Yeah, Jules. Um, yeah. We've been there. Been there. We've all been there. Not only that, um, at a festival in Liverpool, yeah. I got on the mic and said, make some noise, Manchester. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Literally the worst thing you can say uh, to, a, to a Liverpool audience. Um, I've done that a few times as well. Like. Yeah. You know, it's like third day of a festival. I've no idea what's going on. Just happens. <laughs> Nothing you can do. Yeah. Uh, right. Tomorrow I have my first back-to-back -back set. Uh, any Ooh. tips? What should I discuss with the other DJ? You know what, Danny? You're more a back-to-back -back DJ than I am. Yeah, I love back-to-back yeah. so much. And some DJs, i got to be honest, some DJs doesn't work well. Like, you just don't click and have the same sort of energy and you're not on the same level. Do you need to get on the same level before or is it just like a... Uh, I think it helps if you know the DJ personally. Yeah. Like if it's a friend and you jump on together, you you know, you're not as like awkward about it. You, yeah. You'd be like, oh, pass me the headphones. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas like when you don't really know someone, you're kind of treading lightly I've, a bit. I've done that. A few people have, have you know, I've taken over after a warm up. Yeah. have been like, can we do a bit? And I'm like, I don't know where you're, where yeah. you're at. I just don't know. Yeah. And I don't know if it... Like I, I think wanna, you need to know what type of DJ they the are. Yeah. Really, yeah. But um, yeah, you never know. Like sometimes it might just click, click and it might like be like an energy there and you yeah. both have the same vibe and it's like, yeah. it's perfect. Especially if it's a uh, specific genre event. You yeah, can't really yeah. go too wrong. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So just, just vibe. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, maybe have a little chat before, but I wouldn't overthink it because then it could possibly yeah, go wrong. Yeah. Uh, let's go what? for this one. We'll do one more. One of my decks froze at a New Year's Day gig. <gasps> I had to go into an emergency loop until we found out, uh, until we found the next DJ who was smoking outside. <laughs> I was on my last track and it was pretty stressful. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. There's, a, there's a loop going on. Yeah. A DJ a four outside. Beat loop. <laughs> <laughs> there's a DJ outside having a smoke and a yeah. chat and she's like, help. <laughs> All, everyone in the crowd just waiting on this four beat loop. Like, what's going on? <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah on that note guys just remember our Flex 10 uh, competition is live you can enter uh, just check out our socials there's a link uh, on our socials uh, and we will be back uh, next week with another podcast uh, have a great week we'll see you next week peace bye